hey we're back again another video and in this video i want to ask a very big question to creatives out there or anybody into any sort of creative enterprise should you specialize or should you be a generalist that's a big question that a lot of creatives across photography videography graphic design and related fields it's a big question that a lot of people sometimes have to answer deciding whether to specialize in a particular niche or to offer a broad range of services and have a significant impact on your career trajectory or your personal brand on your marketability and your business or your hustle as a whole so in this video we're going to go into the pros and cons of either of these two approaches should you specialize or should you be a generalist there are advantages and disadvantages to both so stay tuned and watch to the end by the way if this is your first time here i'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel this channel is dedicated to helping you discover your creative potential. I'm on that journey myself every day, trying to push myself to be more, to do more, and to have more. And I created this channel to invite you along that journey as I share my knowledge, my experiences, my thoughts, and my creative work as well. I hope you enjoy the content in this channel. Please check out the videos. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so. Let's get into the video. So first we're going to talk about specializing. Specializing means honing your skills in a particular area or a particular style or a particular type of service. Examples include a photographer who decides he's only going to focus on doing weddings or a photographer who decides he's only going to focus on doing portraits or a graphic design artist who decides he just wants to focus on doing logos or branding and another one who decides he wants to focus on doing document design or presentation design or infographics or a videographer who wants to specialize in just doing documentaries or someone else who just wants to just do adverts advertisements and so on and so forth what are the pros of specializing well first of all specializing allows you to have deeper expertise it allows you to become a real expert on a particular field it helps you to be able to master your craft in that particular area and this can elevate the quality of your work and help you deliver exceptional results in that particular area those photographers I know who decide to specialize in just wedding photography, the quality of their work speaks volumes. Anybody who decides to specialize in a particular field would become better at it than people who just do it among all the other things they do, that is to say, generalists. So yeah, one of the advantages of specializing is that you deliver higher quality work because you become an expert in that chosen field. Another advantage of specializing is that you have higher earning potential. Specialists are usually able to charge higher premium rates because they're really more or less like the best at what they do and the best in the industry, so to speak. And so they can afford to charge premium fees because you want the best. They charge these high fees because of their in-depth knowledge and their deep experience working in that particular field. And clients who seek specialists are usually also willing to pay that additional fee because they believe that they're paying for an expert and they're getting their money's worth. So that's one of the advantages of specializing. By focusing on a particular niche, you build a distinct identity in the market. So you really, really stand out because your brand is specialized, is specific to a particular endeavor or a particular area. And so this helps with brand recognition. You are more easily recognizable in your field as against somebody who generalizes and who does everything. It's hard to really pinpoint what it is they do and probably their names will not come up whenever you mention a particular field. So for instance, if you close your eyes and picture portrait photography in Abuja, there are some names that will pop up immediately. If you close your eyes and picture wedding photography in Nigeria, there are some names that will pop up instantly. That's because those names have specialized in those areas. So it helps with branding and identity and helps to create a very strong identity for your business. And when you specialize, another advantage of specializing is that you're able to do more targeted marketing. It's easier to market your services because your audience is clearly defined. Your messaging can be tailored directly to a specific market or a specific audience, making your marketing and promotional efforts more effective. So because you are focused solely on newborn photography, all your marketing language when you're advertising your services and when you're engaging with your clients is really focused on them and their needs. And so you're able to do more effective marketing. And so people are more likely to respond to your marketing, promotion, and all of those things which helps business at the end of the day. Now, one other advantage of specializing is that you get more referrals. Clients are more likely to refer you if you are seen as an expert in your field. Word of mouth spreads really quickly within specific industries or specific areas or specific communities. And that leads to more opportunities. 
So if you are specialized as a documentary videographer and that's all you do, it's easy for you to get referred because people can easily identify. You know, it's connected to the other reason that you talked about having a strong brand identity because immediately documentary videography is mentioned, your name pops up and it's easy for people to now refer you. Now, there's a flip side to this. There are pros and there are cons, right? So what are the cons of specializing? Well, first of all, you might end up with a narrower client base. Yeah, because you're not for everybody. So your client base might be actually quite narrow. It can limit the number of clients that you can attract. And if your niche is too small or too specific, you may find it difficult to get a consistent flow of work. But let's say the documentaries. Not every organization is shooting documentaries all the time. And so there'll be times when you're probably not getting you know, opportunities or not doing any business because of that gap in between people needing your services. So that's one of the cons of having a narrow niche or a narrow area of focus. Now another con is what I would call market vulnerability. And that is if trends shift away from your niche or if technology shifts away from your niche, you might find yourself out of business. Let's say for instance, let's just imagine that you're a graphic designer and your particular area of focus is maybe logos or let's say PowerPoint presentations. And that's your focus. And then new technology comes out and people don't use PowerPoint anymore for presentations. Maybe there are some other new software that develops. You might find yourself out of business unless you quickly adapt and now begin to learn the new tools and new skills. A photographer who specializes in print media, for instance, you always want to print your pictures. At the end of the day, if technology moves on beyond print and people no longer print and prefer to have digital images, then you might find yourself out of business. Now this next point is a big one. When you specialize in a particular area, there is high potential for you to get burnt out because you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. And the repetition just becomes a bore and you know, becomes mentally tasking for you to continue to do that same type of work. It can lead to a creative burnout. You know, it might become monotonous over time. You limit your sense of creative fulfillment. And that has happened to me before. There was a time when I was really doing weddings and then it got really so tasking and, you know, monotonous and you're experiencing the same challenges all the time. Because of that, I decided to branch out into other things and I began to focus more on birthday portraits. And then after a while, after doing birthday portraits, more or less became a little bit monotonous and so on and so forth. So that's one of the cons of specializing or narrowing your niche. Some people can handle it, some people can't. Another cons or consequence or downside of specializing is that it poses some adaptability issues. If you focus on just doing a particular type of graphic and then for some reason, you know, the market trends shift and client demands shift and the business environment changes and, you know, you need to start learning how to do other things. You may find it hard to adapt and scale up and scale out and change the direction of your business because you've been so used to doing this particular thing. All your tools, all your software, all your gear is focused on this particular type of thing. That may pose a challenge. Being adaptable to the market, to the business and to client demands may be a little bit of a challenge for somebody who has decided to narrow down or focus in one particular area. So let's talk about being a generalist. Generalizing means working across various styles, various mediums or industries, various fields. I am more of a generalist. I don't know, I just have a very high level of curiosity. I learn things quite easily and I always want to try new things and I want to explore. I don't want to limit myself to one particular thing. I get bored quite easily if I'm doing one thing all the time. And my passions change a lot. And sometimes I'm really passionate about portraits. And next time I'm really passionate about storytelling through documentaries. And then I also want to do graphic design. So I, I, will, I will confess to you, I'm a generalist. So generalists like me, I've shot weddings, I do corporate events. I've shot real estate before. And as a graphic designer, I do logos, I do PowerPoint presentations, infographics. So that's me. Generalists are like that. So what are the pros of being a generalist? Let's talk about the pros. There are some pros. Well, first of all, a generalist has a broad client base because you know, you are for everybody, so to speak. Anybody can call you up. Hey, Sean, I want uh, a logo. Oh, I want a PowerPoint design. Oh, I want um, to do photos for my newborn or my graduation ceremony. I'm your guy. Generalists have a broad client base. So it allows you to attract a very broad range of clients. You can tap into multiple markets, which could provide a steadier flow of projects and a steadier flow of income. Another advantage of being a journalist is that being a journalist or doing a variety of jobs helps keep things fresh and helps you maintain a very high level of creative energy because you're exploring different things. Today you're doing a PowerPoint design and you're getting inspired by design and all of that. And the next project is that you're doing portraits for a graduation ceremony. You become very versatile, you become 
you know, very flexible and you're able to tap into different things. You're able to use different gear, like you know how to use different kind of cameras, different lenses, different software and all of those things. So it's, it's really quite interesting. You're also able to experiment a lot and be adventurous and learn new things. And I find that quite exciting, you know, for me. So maybe that's why I'm a generalist. Another advantage of being a generalist is you have greater adaptability. As a journalist, you're able to pivot between, you know, different fields and different things. And if the market environment changes, people are no longer asking for portraits, they want to have events, or people are no longer asking for logo designs or PowerPoint presentations, they want some, some other kind of work, or maybe the demand for events, videography is less due to some technology or something, you're able to adapt. So if the demand for wedding photography decreases, you're able to shift onto something else. That has been my own experience and yes, it's really a plus side of being a journalist. Another advantage is that there's a lower risk of market saturation. So because you're not relying on a single niche, you're less vulnerable to market saturation or changes in trends in a specific area. So if one segment of your business slows down, you can easily pick up another one or fall back onto the one that is still working. And I think the last point I'll give as a pro for being a journalist is that there are improved networking opportunities because you're working with a wide variety of clients and you're working in a wide variety of industries. So this really expands your network, potentially leading to more referrals and more connections for future projects. Again, I find that to be true from my experience. But then, like everything else, there's a good side, there's also a bad side. Now, the downsides of being a journalist include lack of deep expertise. Journalists are not generally considered to be experts in any one field and it may make it harder to charge premium rates or compete with specialists. And, you know, this is really true. If somebody comes to me asking for portraits and I charge a high price. Sometimes I get clients saying, but you're not so-so-and-so, <laughs> you know, because when they think about so-so-and-so, they see that person as a specialist and they can understand if he charges a very high price. But then in their mind, I'm not seen as that guy, that expert. So why am I charging so high? So yeah, it can be quite a limitation in terms of pricing your business and trying to offer your services at a premium price. You stand the risk of being viewed as a jack of all trades and a master of none. For the same reasons, it may be harder to build a very strong personal brand. And I mean strong personal brand. Yeah, you could brand yourself as a creative, you could brand yourself as a generalist, as a jack of all trades, but it's not the same as branding yourself as an expert in a particular area. If you're really trying to make yourself like a household name, it might be better to just specialize in one or two things. I just talked about marketing yourself as a generalist. Sometimes marketing yourself as a generalist doesn't allow your marketing and your messaging to be very cohesive and, you know, on point. You may stand the risk of your marketing and your messaging just being all over the place. Again, even your portfolio may be all over the place and people will not be able to really pinpoint and say, okay, this guy is really good in the area that they want you for, right? Because people will reach out to you for a specific need. And when they see your portfolio, you're doing wedding photography, event photography and all of that. For some clients, that might not hit the mark for them. So another cons is that they may also perceive your value as being less or low. So this goes back to the point about charging high premiums for your services. People may just feel, oh, he's a jack of all trades now. I mean, he's not supposed to be that expensive. So you may not be able to charge and get really good money for your services because of the perception people have that you're not an expert, you know, you're not that guy. And that might even be why they're coming to you because they know you're not the expert, but you could probably provide a reasonable quality of service and they would feel that they shouldn't pay that large amount. So it's one of the cons and that has been true in my experience as well. And the other point I was trying to make about marketing, if you are a generalist, if you decide that you want to be able to do all the different fields of business in your particular industry or area, your marketing might be a little bit more complex. You may need to create multiple marketing strategies for each of the various services that you offer. You may need to create different marketing platforms. If there's a particular platform where wedding photographers go to market their services and get business, you may have to be there. And if there's another platform, of course, for graphic design and other things, you may have to also set up over there. And so, you know, your marketing strategies and your marketing packaging and your campaigns may be a little more complex than somebody who is just focused on one particular area. It's quite easy for him to just package his marketing messaging and target his audience and do his thing. So that's one of the cons. And the other point is that, yes, because you are a generalist, you are going to be facing stiff competition from the specialist. And so for the kind of clients you are targeting, most of them may prefer to go with a specialist than to go with you. 
As a generalist, you might find yourself in a very crowded market and it will be harder for you to stand out. So I just thought to do this quick video to really talk about these issues because just about yesterday or so or two days ago, I was really thinking about my own career as a creative. Because like I said, I'm a generalist. I do so many things, right? I do graphic design. I make videos, I shoot documentaries, I do event videos, I do portraiture, I've shot weddings and um, product photography, baby, I've done everything. Sometimes I look back and I feel like, was that the wisest thing to do, you know, to decide to be a journalist? Or was I just being myself? And that's the thing you have to ask yourself if you are thinking about answering this question. Now, in another video, I'm going to talk about how to answer this question because all I did in this video was to just present to you the scenarios of the two options. One, being a generalist. Two, being a specialist. What does it really mean? What are the pros and the cons? If you are out there trying to make that decision, you know, it's very good for you to make an informed decision and think about the realities. And I hope that the points I've made in this video have helped you to see the realities in case you are trying to decide on what to do. Like I said, my own personal experience, I'm a generalist. I have tried specializing, but the kind of person I am, my nature, my creative nature, I'm very adventurous, I'm very curious. I want to explore, I want to test myself and see whether I can do other things. I feel like for me, it's more about a passion for creating. It doesn't matter the field, it doesn't matter the, the discipline or the, the particular area. I find joy in creating logos. I find joy in creating layouts for documents and PowerPoint presentations. I also find joy in doing portraits and telling stories wedding stories, love stories, or documentaries. So that is me trying to respond to my nature and trying to respond to the things I love to do, right? But there has been a downside to it, and that is that I feel like maybe I've not made as much money as I could have when I think about how much specialists are charging for these services I offer. I find that I have not charged as much as they have, and I've not attracted those kind of clients. Now, that's not to say I've not done well in business. The advantage of being a journalist is that you have a more steady stream of income because if it's not wedding season and all of a sudden you're not getting demands for wedding photography, you can fall back on event photography or birthday portraits or you fall back on graphic design. And there are times I don't get people asking me to do document layouts and PowerPoint presentations and rather I get NGOs asking me to shoot documentaries for them. So I've had a more steady stream of income, you know, but like I said, there are pros and there are cons. So this video is for you to think about the question and decide. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how I would approach answering this question. I'm going to share key considerations for deciding on either being a specialist or a generalist. And hopefully that video will also help to wrap this up, this particular topic and provide some value. So once again, Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not hit that subscribe button? It helps my channel grow and encourages me to keep making these kind of videos. This channel is dedicated to helping you out there to discover your creative potential and maximize it. I believe everybody is creative. Everybody has creative potential. So even if you're not a photographer, videographer, or graphic designer, you might be a makeup artist, you might just be anybody, and you want to really connect with your creative self and push your creative potential forward, this channel is for you. Please watch the other videos on the channel and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.